Good evening and welcome to The Connection. How's everybody doing this evening? Good, good. Have we got any announcements? What's going on in the midst of the church today? Well, I would like to point out that July 15th through 19th, we will be having Vacation Bible School at the church. So if you have uh, kids that are in that age group or hey, if you would want to volunteer to help, uh, I would uh, have you contact the church office. And then uh, June 2nd, there's going to be a get together at the Splash Park, uh, sponsored by the youth group. So uh, if you, a uh, couple things for the kiddos this okay. coming up. We have got annual conferences coming up. It starts on, uh, starts on the 7th of June. Uh, it's annual conference 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, I don't know. It goes for three days, 7th, 8th, 9th, 7th, 8th, and 9th, and I know we have also got karaoke on the 8th of June, so, so part of us will be gone and part of us will be here, but I'm sure that it will be handled just fine without me being around, but, uh, but I always miss, uh, miss the karaoke because I have, I have a lot of fun with that for sure. Uh, so, so we've got that, those couple of things going on. Have we got any other announcements to go along with those? All right, if nothing else, let's stand and worship. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. It trembles at his voice, it trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Age to age he stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Name above all names, worthy of all praise, my heart will sing how great is our God. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. He is the name above all names, he's so worthy of all praise, and my heart will sing, how great is our God. You may be seated. Would you pray with me, please? Good and gracious Heavenly Father, mighty God, we come before you today. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you so much, dear Father, for, for all of the things that you have done for us, dear Lord, and the gift of the 
precious gift of the Holy Spirit that you've given to us. We ask, dear Father, that you would be with us in this service, dear Lord, and stir the Holy Spirit inside of each and every one of us, dear Lord, so that we might receive your words. We ask, dear Father, that you would be with this congregation, bless them in a mighty way, dear Father. We ask these things in Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. See you next time. Clothed in rainbows of living color, flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder, blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be to you the only wise king holy 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 is the lord god almighty who was and is and is to come with all creation i sing praise to the king of kings you are my everything, and I will adore you. Filled with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath of living water, such a marvelous mystery. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything and I will adore you. That song, one of those nice little flowing praise and worship songs. It's real. That really, I really enjoy that one. We believe. Hey. 
in this time of desperation when all we know is doubt and There is only one foundation We believe We believe In this broken generation When all is dark you help us see There is only one salvation We believe We believe We believe in God the Father We believe in Jesus Christ We believe in the Holy Spirit And He's given us new life We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back again. We believe. So let our faith be more than anthem. Greater than the songs we sing And in our weakness and temptations We believe, we believe We believe in God the Father We believe in Jesus Christ We believe in the Holy Spirit, and he's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection, and he's coming back again. Let the lost be found and the dead be raised in the here and now. Let love invade, let the church live loud. Our God will say, we believe, we believe. And the gates of hell will not prevail, for the power of God has torn the veil. Now we know your love will never fail. We believe, we believe. We believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And he's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. We believe. We believe. Where have you seen God this week? Mark's standing back there. Was, he's ready. He's ready. <laughs> I see the baseball stance. He's ready to go either direction. Go ahead, Hunter. I wasn't going to say anything much. Um, I just need to know where that card was that was being passed around because I need to sign it. That's for Martha. Oh, Martha. That moved, I thought that it moved was for us. Laura. I thought it was for Laura, so. Uh, never mind. <laughs> Okay, we got another one. Where have you seen God this week? A prayer request, a joy, a concern, any of those things going on? We do have a prayer request. Uh, uh, Terry Dye uh, and her son Jacob come here a lot for the karaoke. And uh, her daughter 
had a house fire in Carthage last night, so they lost. Yeah, they lost lost uh, their home. Yeah, every uh, thank you. Everybody's safe, but uh, they would need prayers and uh, the community to reach out and help them. So. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. Has anybody else got one? I have a joy. Uh, Joe Eric, uh, who you have been praying for, who is uh, my uh, sister's grandson, uh, who has pancreatic cancer, uh, had his stomach tube inserted, and he's doing well with it and can eat a limited diet with it and has been sent home and is on chemo every other week right now. So... <laughs> Amen. Thank you for your prayers because that is what's working and that is what happened with Joe Eric. And then secondly, um, on a much minor note, you know, we've got some wonderful neighbors that you've also prayed for, uh, Jeff and Cecilia, and uh, we couldn't be more blessed. I've been weed whacking all week because our, our, our lawnmower is at the lawnmower hospital. Is that what you're calling it? Yeah. yeah so Michael says it's at the lawnmower hospital. And our neighbor has come down for the second Jeff Cecilia's husband has come down for the second time now since Michael's, you know, been uh, out of sorts. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, the lawn board's got a broken leg. Yeah. And so he came over and, and just cut our lawn today uh, out of the goodness of his heart. So, joy. Absolutely. We have got some great, some great people around us, and that's a, that's a joy for sure. Go ahead, Constance. I have a relative who is dealing with dementia. And I just got a call today, and her sister tells me she suffered a stroke. And so now she won't be able to live independently anymore, and that's going to be a major adjustment for her. So I'd like your prayers for Marilyn. Well, it's good to have Kay back tonight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is a joy for sure. And uh, I also wanted to share that I got a text from uh, Rose Pointer's daughter. Nice. Uh, about where she's living now. Uh, I looked up the group home on the internet, and it looks like a real nice uh, uh, home that she's in from the outside. Good, good. Uh, rather new. It's down in Republic, Missouri, and I have the address of that. Um, and uh, she didn't, I, she really didn't say how uh, Rose was doing, but uh, I had been trying to connect with her for some time, and I asked her if I, I said, uh, I hope I haven't been bugging you too much for the address, and she says, no, no. Um, uh, she had a, this is a praise, that she had some sort of kidney infection and wasn't feeling good, and so that kind of delayed her, and now she's doing better, but she said that she really appreciated us thinking about her mother. So. Very nice, very nice. Now that, now that we have a... And so, and so now, Rosane, now that we have an address on her, we might want to put her a card together and send one to Rose also. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Nice, thank you. Go ahead, Marilyn. Okay. I have two prayer requests for Malba, Melba? our friend Malba Butler, okay. and, and then another lady named Lisa. Okay. Melba. How is, how is Melba doing? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Has anybody else got one? A joy, concern, prayer request? Nice to have Charlie. Charlie this evening back with us. He's sitting back there. He's so cool. It's <laughs> evening wherever he goes. I like your shades. Nice. Nice. Has anybody else got one? Uh, I'd like to uh, keep Sarah Mulligan from the uh, big church. Main church? Okay. Pray for Sarah. Okay. Anyone else got one? Prayer request, a joy, a concern? It's nice to have you back with us, too, this evening. Okay. 
If nothing else, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll follow this with the Lord's Prayer. Good and gracious Heavenly Father, mighty God, we come before you once again today, Lord. We always, we always thank you. We thank you, dear Lord, for all of the different ways that we see you at work in the lives of ourselves and in the world around us, dear Lord. We, we thank you for being with us and guiding us and leading us in a, in a direction, dear Lord, that you would have us to go. We ask, dear Father, that you would be with each one of these prayer requests, dear Lord, the joys, the concerns that we have heard this evening, dear Lord. Put your mighty healing hand upon those, dear Lord, and the, and the ones that have lost homes, dear Lord, and fires. We ask, dear Father, that you would be with them, dear Lord, in their suffering and as they suffer through this, through this bad spot in their life. Put your mighty healing hand, dear Lord, upon those ones that, that, that are suffering illness, dear Lord, and help, help them, dear Father, if it be your will. We ask, dear Father, that you would uh, look over those overseas, dear Lord, the ones that are in wars, and dear Lord, the, the famine and, and, the, and everything that is going on over there. It, when you watch the news, it looks so very bad. We ask, dear Father, that you would be with each one of them, dear Lord, and comfort them and, and help nourish them, dear Lord, if it be your will. We ask, dear Father, that you would be with us as the body of Christ as we come together to pray the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, how would be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we come into this time of tithes and offering, I would like to thank each one of you for your support of the United Methodist Church here in Bolivar. I really appreciate everything that you do, and I'm, I'm absolutely sure that the Bolivar community does too. The United Methodist Church here in Bolivar has their, has their fingers and their hands in a lot of different areas. We work on the food pantry, and there's uh, uh, several different things, community food banks and, and the clothing bank, and we do a lot of different stuff out in the community, and if, the, if there's any way that you would like to be involved, there's always, you can contact our office, and, and she will give you a list of all the different stuff that goes on and all the different things that you can be involved in. We thank you for your contributing dear, with, uh, with your tithes and your offerings and your gifts. It takes a, takes a little bit of money to do the ministries of the church and, and be in the life of the community. So thank you all so very much for all you do. If you would join with me in the prayer of abundance. O oh, gracious, merciful, and abundant God, with thankful hearts we give you our praise, our offerings, and all that we are. Let the world see your generous nature working through us. Make us a reflection of your love. Amen. Under the influence. Has any of you ever been under the influence? I've I've been under the influence. Now now when I when I say when I say under the influence, have you been ever under the influence of your parents? You've been under the influence of your parents, right? I mean we all started out that way, so we've all started out under the influence of something. And so when we look at under the influence, you immediately go where? Alcohol and drugs, right? Alcohol and drugs. That's immediately because that phrase is always connected to being under the influence. So I, I kind of put together this little thing. I was like, okay, well, under the influence, what does that mean to me? And so that's where I started at. Under the influence, have you ever been under the influence of your parents? Maybe you have been under the influence of a best friend or a group of friends. Television social media, maybe under the influence of an organization or a group, maybe a school, a leader, a cult, but we always go back to the under the influence when we hear that phrase, it's always what we think about is under the influence of drugs or alcohol is where that catches us. But when we talk about under the influence this evening, we're going to talk about being under the influence of the Holy Spirit. So we're at the 50-day mark 
right, after Easter. So 50 days after Easter, what comes? The day of Pentecost. The day of Pentecost. We got ascension at 40 days. We got Pentecost at 50 days. We didn't, we didn't really uh, go too awful much on the ascension because we had some other stuff going on. But here we are at Pentecost, and, and, and I just love the Holy Spirit. That is one of my favorite subjects, the Holy Spirit. And, it's, and I think probably the reason why it is, is so much my favorite subject is, is probably because of the magnitude of the gift that we were given on, with the Holy Spirit when Jesus Christ ascended up into the heaven and he said, now I'm going to go, and, but, but I'm going to send. Wait, wait, wait there in Jerusalem, and I'm going to send the Holy Spirit back. Wait until you get it. And, boy, I tell you what, what would it be like if we did not have the guidance of the Holy Spirit in our life? It would be, it would be terrible. I have walked away from the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I've been there, and then I've walked away and withdrawn from it, and I'm sure that all of us have because, you know, we're just human beings, and that's just the way we are. We're kind of fickled that way. We'll, we'll get close, and then we'll go, nah, 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 I'm going to back off from that. And then we'll, get, we'll draw close to God again, and you can start feeling the Holy Spirit and feeling his guidance and feeling his urging within things. And I, and I held off my, where have you seen God this week? Because I, because I was uh, sitting in a meeting earlier this week, and I, and I, and I was asked, was there anything that I needed that I would like to add? And I was, and I said, well, the only thing that I would like to add is we, we've got to make sure that we, that we keep the Holy Spirit in front of us and we keep leading and being guided by the Holy Spirit. And so it was taken, and, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm bad about it, and I, and, I, and I apologize for it to start with. I've been on this trip for a year or better. Every time something said, we need to be guided by the Holy Spirit, we need to be guided by the Holy Spirit. That's what church is all about. We have, to be, we have to have that Holy Spirit guiding and leading us forward or everything we do is just for naught. And so when we get into that mode, it's really good. And so I'm sitting there in this meeting and I'm listening to what's going on. And I, and I, heard, I heard a lady say, say this. And she said, well, I was in Walmart the other day and I was urged to speak to this lady and tell her, that she really looked nice today, which opened up this conversation for this lady and this other lady that she did not even know to have this nice conversation in the middle of Walmart. It wasn't about God or it wasn't about anything biblical or, or you didn't have to be a theologian to have this conversation. It was just a beautiful, nice connection through the urging of the Holy Spirit. I was led to do this. I was led to do this, she said. And that's where I really go, yeah. See, we're doing it. That's what we're doing. And I've heard even, I've heard even things about it this evening in my conversations this evening about how people were urged or led into the Holy Spirit. My friend up the street from me was led to call me this morning and say, hey, can I come down and cut your lawn? Can I come down and cut your lawn? Now, I, I don't know that, that th those two things go together because I really don't like to cut the lawn that well, but my friend come and cut my lawn for me, and I was so, I was so blessed, and I'm so blessed to have those folks around. So our scripture reading tonight comes to you from Acts chapter 2, so we went into Acts and we jumped, so now we're jumping back to where the Holy Spirit came in at. And so Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it says this, and we're going from 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, there were, staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under, under heaven. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment. 
because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they ask, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hear them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Calpurnia, Pontus, Asia, Phygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongue. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Peter, then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd, fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people, your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they will prophesy, I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will turn to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So when you hear the smoke and fire and billows of smoke and fire, you get a little bit, oh, but then that last makes you go, ah, but everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I, I like this piece of scripture, and here's why. The church begins right here. This is where the church starts. And, and, I, and I enjoy Peter and his message to the people that were there. We always think of of this when we look at this piece of scripture you 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 visualize the 12 in the upper room you know and they're kind of hid out and and all of a sudden the blowing of the mighty wind comes around and and they and they're standing up but when you get to reading a little bit deeper in this you realize that that's not what is going on there it says earlier in the first chapter in those days peter stood up among the believers a group and a number of a number of them was about 120 people. So when you when you go, oh, okay, well it wasn't just the 12. There was 120 of them there, and they and this first piece, this number, this first chapter here, they were picking a new person to take the place of Judas that had left the group. And so they're picking this new person, and they're trying to choose from all of these different people. And so they pick the new person, guided by the Holy Spirit once again. And so we look at the Holy Spirit, and you can say, okay, well, you know, I don't know why we celebrate this so much. Well, to impartial, we celebrate this because it was always a celebration. All the Jews from all these nations of all over the Roman Empire, when, when you go through that list, those are places that were all around the Roman Empire. Every one of them. Every one of them were part of the Roman Empire. Well, there was a celebration that went on all the time there. After Passover, 50 days after Passover, I see you, Hunter, you know this, don't you? Savat. That was, the, that was the festival that was going on at that time. Yeah, that, 
Yeah, well, Savat was the name of the festival. <laughs> was the name of the festival, and it was a, and it was the, it's, and Pentecost means 50 days, means 50, and so Savat was the festival, and it was the festival of weeks, the festival of the harvest is what it was, and, uh, and so you've got some symbolism that goes around, uh, and so also, this was a, this was an annual thing, and these festivals had been set up, and they have gone down the line from one generation to the next generation. It was celebrated before even that, it was celebrated as a commemoration of the giving of the law on Mount Sinai to Moses. And so it had been celebrated on this specific day all the way down through there. Well, now, as the Christian community comes together and the church is formed, now just so happens to be, and this is how God works, this is how God works all of these things, Passover, Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection all line up together, Pentecost, and all of this festival of the Jewish people lines up together. So we all celebrate together because why? Because we're all part of the body of Christ. We're all part of that body. We're all part of the new covenant. When it says all, it means all of us. All of us. Jews, Gentiles, it doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, or what has happened to you. You are part of that community of faith. All you have to do is accept. Well, there's where we're at. So, the Holy Spirit was given. Peter stands up with the 11 and all of a sudden Peter this guy that doesn't speak so well and he's always a little bit of a doubting and 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 and, and he was the one that he was the one if you remember right he was the one that said no I don't know that guy I don't know that guy when Jesus was crucified but then all of a sudden Peter gets new life through the Holy Spirit once again and so we read part of part of what was going on there in this in this chapter but I want to read a little bit more and 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 take a little bit more of this to this to heart Peter as he's as he's speaking to the people he's he's telling them you know what has happened you know this is Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you guys have crucified it says in verse 34 for David uh, now now, Peter quotes scripture a couple different times in here. He's quote, he quotes the, the uh, Joel scripture, and that's sure enough, that's exactly what it says, word for word, matter of fact, in Joel. And so, so here's another spot. So Peter's, Peter talks about this for a little, a little while, and he says, David said, said about him, I saw the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken Therefore, my heart is glad, and my tongue rejoices. My body is also with the rest, with rest in hope, because you will not be abandoned to the realms of the dead. You will not be led, be let your holy. You will not let your holy one see decay, and that is Psalm 16, verses 8 through 11. Peter turns right around and does it again in verse 34. He says, for, for David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. And that is Psalms 110. So Peter knew the scripture. He quoted three different places in scripture right off the top of his head, not having a book in his hand, not having any of those things. He knew what was going on, and he knew what God's word said. And for us to draw near and to be able to listen to and get the guidance of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to tell you one thing. you got to know the word. you got to know what it says. you got to know what God's word says. Because if you don't know what God's word says, it's hard to be guided by the Holy Spirit because you don't know what the word says to you. And so when we talk about studying the word and we talk about staying in our Bible and drawing close to God, this is how we draw close to God, through prayer and through reading his holy word. 
It tells us. It gives us guidance for our life. It gives us affirmation that we're okay and that we're not supposed to be afraid and everything is going to be okay. It gives us that hope of the future. It gives us the gift that stays with us forever. It's always been here. Ever since that day when the Holy Spirit came to be within us, the disciples Time after time after time, they would go, they went over here to make sure that you were getting the Holy Spirit, and they went over there to make sure that you were receiving the Holy Spirit. And it was hard for them to believe that even the Gentiles received the Holy Spirit. Oh, why is these other people receiving the Holy Spirit? Oh, we thought that was just for us. No, when Jesus said it's for all, it's for all. The Holy Spirit was available to all, but it was spotty. In the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, God would send his Holy Spirit or would send his angel or whatever to speak to whomever, but the Holy Spirit was not indwelling at that time. When Jesus Christ sent the Holy Spirit to us, now the Holy Spirit dwells within us. And so it guides us and it leads us in a direction if we allow it to. We cannot allow it to because we're a people of free will. We are a people of free will. And we can do whatever we want to. We can choose our direction. And we can choose our path. We're not forced to do anything. God doesn't force anyone to follow him. He lets us choose on our own. After Peter quotes these couple of scriptures, he says, therefore, this is verse 36, he says, therefore, let all... Israel be assured of this God has made this Jesus whom you crucified both Lord and Messiah when the people heard this they were cut to the heart and they said Peter and to the other apostles brothers what shall we do and so we can see the Holy Spirit right here at work on those folks. The people had not, that had not accepted Jesus into their heart, immediately you see the provenient grace of God, the Holy Spirit that is around us at all times, and whether we accept it or whether we don't, the Holy Spirit is with us and around us at all times. Now when we accept it, here's what happens. When the people when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they said, Peter, and to, they said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what can we do? Peter replied, and here it is, Repent. First thing, first thing, repent and be baptized. Every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins. And you will receive the gift. Even Peter calls it the gift. It's a gift to us. It doesn't cost us anything. It is a gift. It's something that God gives us to help us along in our journey and to guide us and to keep us out of the ditch because we kind of fall off in the ditch every once in a while. I'm pretty bad about myself. I'm not a good driver for the most part. I'll get in the ditch, and I'll get back up on the road, and I'll get in the ditch for a little bit, and I'll get back up on the road. I've been doing pretty good as I got older. Now, when I was a young man, I'd get in the ditch pretty often. And I'd stay there and waller around, you know, get a lot of mud all over me. I'm just one of those guys. But having the training and the knowledge of God within me, I always knew how to turn around and get out of that ditch. I always knew how. I always knew how. But it was always my choice to do or not to do. It is. Can you imagine being a person that was never taught? That was never taught the power of God and the power that the Holy Spirit brings to you. Can you imagine being one of those people? Can you imagine not, not never, ever knowing God? From the time I was a little bitty, from the time I can remember, I was always taught about God. There was never a time in my life that I didn't believe in God. I always believed in God. 
because he was always part of my life. My grandfather was a pastor. My mother was a daughter of a Baptist preacher. And we were taught from the time we were big enough to speak about God. And so I've, I've sit in, a, in my room in my office and I've tried to imagine not knowing God. And it's hard for me to imagine because he's so much a part of me. And a lot of us are like that. We've been raised in a church. We've been raised around Christians all of our life. And in this community around us here, in the middle of Missouri, we're Bible Belt people. I'll guarantee you, we are. And there's a lot of us that go, that when, when somebody goes, well, I don't know God, and I don't know if I believe in that. You go, huh? Because it's, it's, it's shocking to us because we're, we have been raised around it and we have known it all of our whole entire life. But there's people out there that are like that. There is. And our part in this is to love those people and to show them God's love through us. And here's where the Holy Spirit comes in because some people are not so lovable some people are just not so lovable. They're just not. But God's Holy Spirit that lives in within us, you know that, Hunter. God's Holy Spirit that lives within us allows us and enables us, gives us the power of self-control where we can control ourselves and we can show God's love to others that are not so lovable. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. It's all about the Holy Spirit. Verse 38 says this, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sin. And you will receive the Holy Spirit. I just got to reading that. I'll read it again. It's, it's never a bad thing to read that one a second time for sure. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off. See where he's, where he's talking? All all who are far off, talking about the future, for all whom the, Lord, whom the Lord our God will call. Will call, not has called, who will call. He knows that this is going to go forward. He already knows. Peter already knows that this is going to go forward. He's already seen it. With many other words, he warned them. And he pleaded with them, save yourselves for this from this corrupt generation, those who are accepted, who have accepted his message were baptized. And about 3,000, here let me tell you that number again, about 3,000 were added to their number that very day. Now, you talk about a revival meeting right there, brothers and sisters. Woohoo! Can you imagine that? Can you imagine the joy? And who wouldn't think you were drunk on the Holy Spirit when that happens? Oh my gosh, can you imagine that happen today? Can you imagine that happen today? We were talking about memberships, and we've got some memberships coming up here at the Bolivar United Methodist Church, and I'm just, I'm just ecstatic about that. It's wonderful. It's wonderful to see new people coming into the church. It's just amazing that that happens. But 3,000? But 3,000 of them? That's a lot. And, and when people go, well, you know what? They've had a little bit too much wine this morning. They've been tipping the bottle a little bit. He says that, and Peter says it's 9 o'clock in the morning. Do you know what 9 o'clock in the morning is for the Jewish people? Prayer time. Prayer time. It's one of their prayer times. And, and so he says it. Okay, it's 9 o'clock in the morning. There's symbolism right there. They ain't drunk because it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. It's time for prayer. It's not time for drinking just yet. It's time for prayer. And a lot of people will go take this and go, oh, well, you know, we shouldn't be drinking. We shouldn't be drinking. They drank. They drank. It's okay. A little wine is okay for your stomach, and that's not, that's not a bad thing. We talk, about it in, we talk about it in the Bible, but we ain't going to step on nobody. We're just not going to do it. That's not the way this reads, and that's not the way God intended it. He's talking about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and this started... At Pentecost. And 
as you get a little bit past this, and this is the end of Peter's sermon right here, but it's, it's kind of cutting, and apparently it was very cutting because they spoke it right in, right, in the, right in the word here. They were cut to the heart because of what had happened and that to realize and to come to the realization that they were the ones that turned Jesus Christ over to the Roman government and hollered out, crucify him, crucify him. They were the ones that did it. And it cut them to the heart. And it changed, it changed how they seen things and what they did. When I get into the Holy Spirit thing, I, I, I always gotta, I've always got to go here. The gifts. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we talk about the speaking in tongues here in Acts. And, and there's speaking in tongues and there's speaking in tongues that talks about it in a couple of different ways. There's Gossemia, whatever they, whatever, what, whatever that word is, is gossemia. I believe is how they, how they say it. And it is the utterance of, of our own spirit to the Holy Spirit. And it's a, and it's a, and it's a speaking that is not a language. But this here in Acts, in the gospel, in this, in this piece of scripture right here, this is a language. This is a language. So the speaking in tongues here tells you that the speaking in tongues that was given to us when the Holy Spirit was given was a different language. And the reason that it was different is to symbolize of the spreading of the gospel message throughout the world. That's the symbolization here. And that's why they talk about the speaking in tongues. Now, in, uh, in Galatians... Chapter, chapter 5, we t uh, Paul talks about the fruits of the Spirit. And the gifts of the Spirit, and this is, this, is the, this is some of the gifts, and we don't all receive all of the gifts. I want to state that very clearly. We don't all receive all of the gifts. We may receive one gift. We may receive a different gift. We may receive one, two, three of the gifts. We may not receive but one partial gift. The gifts of the Spirit are these. Knowledge, faith, healing powers, prophecy, distinguishing a bit between spirits, tongues, and the interpretation of tongues. So when you look at that, how many people can distinguish between different spirits? It's tough. It's tough, but as you draw close to God by reading his word and by prayer, you can kind of tell what spirit is coming at you. You really can. You really can. I used to go, well, you know what? I've got some, some discernment, and I used to be around a lot of people that were not so nice, pretty evil folks, and, and you, could, you could tell when there was evil intent there. You could always tell when there were evil intent there. Even when I wasn't following so close to God, I could still tell when there was some evil intent going on. And I think that's part of our human nature. And when I say the Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit is around us at all times. It is always there. It's always guiding. It's always urging us in different directions. It's a part of our lives. We have to realize that it's here and it is part of our everything that's around us. This Holy Spirit is there within us. The knowledge, our faith. Our faith is a gift of the Holy Spirit. The faith that, yes, I believe that Jesus Christ died for my salvation. I believe he shed his life's blood for me. I do. I do. I believe that with all of my heart. And so when we look at these gifts of the Holy Spirit and things that were given to us by the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit works within us, his, his Holy Spirit witnesses to our spirit. Our spirit is within us, and, our, and the Holy Spirit is also within us, which creates a conflict because we don't always want to do what the Holy Spirit wants us to do. We want to do our own thing. Well, contrary to the Holy Spirit, which it says up here earlier in Galatians, it says this, 
For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. Spells it out, black and white, right there. And so how we tell that others around us have the Holy Spirit within them, and we know that that's not an evil person that we're dealing with, here's how you tell. It even spells that out in black and white for you. How you tell that you're dealing with somebody that's got the Holy Spirit, here's the fruits of the Spirit. So you look at that person and you say, okay, well, they've got the fruits of the Spirit. They do this in DCOM every year. Every year they look for the fruits of the Spirit is basically what they look for. They call it a little bit something different, but they look for the fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and the last one, which should be the very first one, is self-control. We have the ability, when we accept Jesus Christ into our heart, we have the ability to control yourself. And when I say control yourself, and I'm not talking about, well, I don't, I'm not going to go over there because I have control of myself. I'm, con I'm talking about more here. Here, it's your mouth. It's your mouth. We, when we have the ability to control ourselves, we control our tongue. Because that tongue is sharper than any two-edged sword. It tells us right in the Bible. It's black and white also. It tells us that that is what is going on there. And when we don't control our tongue and we just let it ramble, I can tell you one thing. It will get you in trouble over and over again. I have been there because I feel like that I should be able to say whatever I want to because I'm of that age. And I think I've even said that here before. Uh, how many people that are of an age that they say, oh, well, I feel like that I'm of an age group that I can say whatever I want to. No. Everything that we do needs to be measured. It needs to be measured. I know a guy that, that goes to this church that everything that he says, it is measured. And he says it purposely and he says it for a reason. And so that's how we should live our lives within this, within this Holy Spirit when we have the Holy Spirit and we have the ability to do these things. We do. We've, had, we've got all of that stuff. We've got the love. We've got the joy. We've got the peace. We've got the patience. Well, we've got the patience. Well, I don't always have the patience. See, that's one of the fruits that I, that's still hanging on the tree for me for some reason or another. That one there, I, I, have tr I have trouble with. But I have it. When I exercise it, I do have it. I do have it. I have found that out with myself over the last couple of years. I have the patience if I just exercise it instead of, well, instead of me sitting, standing there going, oh, well, I haven't got no patience. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Use it. Use it. And that's all you have to do. We have it. We have it. We just got to realize that we have it. Realize that the Holy Spirit, the gift, gives this to us. It does. It does. And when we use those gifts, when we use the gifts that the Holy Spirit gives us, all of the fruits of the Holy Spirit come flowing out. And it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to have. And so... When we look at this, I, I enjoy the Holy Spirit. I really do. It's one of, my, one of my very favorite things because without it, I would be nothing. I would be nothing. And each and every one of us, without the Holy Spirit, without the Holy Spirit guiding us and moving us in, moving in our lives, it's hard, it's hard to deal with life. Life's tough. Life's tough. There's a lot of suffering and there's a lot of stuff that goes on in your life that if you didn't have that help, where would you be? Right? Where would you be? Where would you be? Always realize, and here's the final, uh, here's, the, here's the finish up, 
always realize that the Holy Spirit is living within you, loving you, caring about you, and every time that you need them, He is there. The Holy Spirit is right there. He is a friend forever, forever. You can accept Him and know, and know God is with you and living in you. Or you can deny it, and you can say it's not true, and say, I'm just out there by myself. But you're not. You're not alone. You are never, ever alone. Jesus Christ made sure that we do not ever have to be alone. We have part of him in each one of us. God bless you all. Would you stand? Son of God enfold you with his spirit and his love. Let him fill your heart and satisfy your soul. Oh, let him have the things that hurt you and his spirit like a dove will descend upon your life and make you whole. Jesus, oh Jesus, come and fill your lambs. Jesus, oh Jesus, come and fill your land. Oh, come and sing this song with gladness as your hearts are filled with joy. Lift your hands in sweet surrender to his name. Oh, give him all your tears and sadness. Give him all your years of pain. And you'll enter into life in Jesus' name. Jesus, oh Jesus, come and fill your lambs. Jesus, oh Jesus, come and fill your lambs. Would you pray with me, please? Good and gracious Heavenly Father, mighty God, we come before you once again today. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the precious and wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit that you've given to us, free of charge, no cost to us, and the benefits are enormous. We ask, dear Father, that you would be with us, dear Lord, and help us, dear Lord, dear Father, to, to submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit and, and let him guide us and lead us forward into this new age that we're going into. We ask, dear Father, that you would be with each and every one that is here, dear Lord, and, and bless them in a mighty way, dear Lord. We ask, dear Father, that you would lead us, guide us, and direct us. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray, amen. As you carry the light of Christ out into the world around you this week, always remember someone is watching you. God bless you all, and thank you for being here.